Hi again everybody and welcome to another edition of Charger 360 telling the stories of the University of New Haven. J.W. Stewart joined as always by Bruce Barber. Bruce, this is a, a historical episode of Charger 360 because it's the first time we've ever had two guests. That's right. I don't think this studio is big enough for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> And I don't think we're going to, actually, I'm going to guarantee we're going over 15 minutes. That's exactly right. <laughs> <laughs> not, not Take the over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Our guests today, Andy Billman and Joe Franco. Now, normally we do this long-winded introduction. We're going to cut right to the chase today. <laughs> we'll, we'll get more into their, their background, but, but Andy has worked at ESPN. Joe's worked at ESPN. They both teach here at the University of New Haven, and they are working on a documentary on Toad's Place in New Haven. For those people who are watching who don't know anything about Toad's Place, Andy, start us off. Please explain what Toad's is and why it's so important. Well, Toad's is a place where we are phrasing it as a meeting place. And it is a place of music, uh, Camelot history. It has a lot of different acts. But what's great about Toad's is it's changed with the times. And it gives an opportunity for new performers, some names you know, some names that grow, and all of everything in between. Uh, Toads really got their chops in the late 70s through getting big rock and roll bands and through the credit of Brian Phelps and through others. They've changed with the times really nicely too. What's great about this is New Haven sometimes, I think when we were in Connecticut too long, you kind of don't take New Haven in the right as we should. New Haven's a great town. It's one of the first structured cities in America. <laughs> so of course there's a Toads place. And what's great about Toads is it sits right across from Yale, but if you look around it, it's in the middle of downtown. So you have all sorts of walks of life, and that's what makes Toads great. I think there's a lot of times now for music concerts where you may not be able to afford, yeah. or may be able to feel like you're not, you're not as a welcome, not at Toads. Anybody, white collar, blue collar, no matter who you are, you're welcome at Toads Place. And I think that's what makes it so great. Yeah, so, and for people who don't know, Toads Place is a what would you say, a small, it's a, it's a concert venue, it's a night, what is, what is Toad's Small hold? club, small under club. a thousand. Right, right. <laughs> so, so no, no big venue there. And correct me if I'm wrong, one of the things that has uh, brought the top acts to Toad's over the years, Joe, has been the fact that their equipment has always been kept right up to date. Uh, acts feel like they can come in and just yeah. unpack and play. And so it's got this incredible history and then you guys decide to do a documentary about it. So how did that all come about? Well, first of all, what, what's helped Toads over the last 50 years, obviously, is not only its location on Yale campus, but when you're between Boston and New York, and what brings the performers here to New Haven and, and to Toads, it's the atmosphere. It's the fans. It, it, it's the response that the performers have received, and that's what's continued to bring them back over the years. And, I, I was gonna, no, I was going to say, what, I mean, this seems like a story that probably should have been told a long time ago, mm -hmm. right? Joe, 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 I'll start with you, and Andy, you can jump in. Have there been any stories done about toads like this, documentary, book, otherwise? Well, a, um, well, let me tell you the story, first of all, of how we've decided to produce this documentary. Uh, I had heard from a, a, a former... Um, colleague of mine at, uh, or graduate at uh, Southern Connecticut State University where I'm a, I'm a graduate from. And Dan Santoro called and he said, uh, they, Toes has just published a book. Have you seen it yet? I went, no. He said, I want to call Brian Phelps, the owner of Toes, and have him send you a copy. Because he, he, Dan says, I think you're going to find it very interesting. So I received the book from Brian, says, you know, Please enjoy the book, and, and uh, I look forward to your feedback. I read the first 20 pages. I dropped the book, and I picked up the phone. I, and I called Toads. I said, yes, Brian Phelps, please. He said, speaking. I said, Brian, this is Joe Franco. You don't know me yet, but I hope you will. I said, what? this is your legacy. This is music history. What are you doing with this? And then the rest is history. We just kept talking, and... and I remember when uh, I reached out to Andy and we went down, we met Brian for lunch and we walked up to the door and I said, Brian, I would like to walk in by myself. I had spent a few evenings at Toads as a student and I walked in and I went, oh, I have been here before. <laughs> and, that's, and, you know, and that's really the passion and, and the, the, the love 
for that particular quote unquote small format arena for music. And then uh, what you've done now, Andy, you obviously got involved. What is, so talk a little about your vision for what this film will look like and then also talk about uh, the way you've been uh, raising money. Um, well, we, we're doing a bake sale now. We're, <laughs> <laughs> we're very, no, no, it's a big bake I, sale. It's a big <laughs> bake sale. Um, well, to the second question, we did a Kickstarter. And Kickstarter is a good way to start for independent projects like Joe and I are doing. It shows that you actually have an interest in the community, an interest worldwide. So we were able to raise that and it worked. So that's a great start. And what we're doing now is we're reaching out to people that love music. I actually think love the idea of giving back to communities that need these places. Can't say this enough, you have to have a toes. It's not good when these places get lost. Um, you know, Joe mentioned something and he's right about the smell and the aura. There's also too what's great about toads, it's wood. There's that little sticky sound that, oh, I always told Brian, I'm like, don't get rid of that. I kind of like how there's stickiness. It's not plastic and weird felt. It's authentic. It, it really feels like you're touching history. And I think we've lost that. And I also like, too, how they still do tickets. <laughs> they still do things that's like, oh, it's not a phone app? He goes, no. <laughs> it's like, I like that. You need the hand-to-hand -hand transaction. So I think these places are important. And in fact, I know they're important. And as I've heard from other musicians who don't know me, who I've been reading their articles, in Europe, they're having a horrible time keeping these places alive because they're not the big buck atmospheres. They aren't, you know, met life. They aren't these places that bring in huge dollars. These places are critical because it gives opportunity for people in local communities to enjoy music. And more importantly, if you're brand new, cut your teeth. <laughs> you can't cut your teeth in Madison Square Garden. You can't in the toads, and that's important. So Toad Toad serves an interesting dual role, right? So it's uh -huh. an opportunity for new musicians to try out uh -huh. their music. Although many people, and a big part of the story is there are some been some famous musical Ooh, acts that. who've come through here. <laughs> Andy, give us a, Andy. You can start. We're going to run some pictures in the background, but give us an idea of some of these big time musical acts who showed up at Small Toads over the years. Well, I think the big one that kind of broke it off was Springsteen and Seeger. They were playing at Nassau Coliseum and they came over afterwards. That obviously gives some authenticity to, to these people, but the big one that they all circle was Billy Joel. Mm -hmm. Joel's gonna do a live album where he's gonna play live songs of his best hits around the country. And Toads happened to be a selection of his through Coplick. Wonderful, that's what kind of broke you know, the level. And then you have other artists coming through there like Huey Lewis and the News, who, by the way, there's this great video that Joe found where he was impersonating uh, Mick Jagger. It's very funny. <laughs> and it just shows the character of that. And you actually have the Ramones, too, in that movement. That was a, from what I've already learned, huge movement in North Haven and New Haven of this Ramones era. And a lot of these kind of bands came through there. And then you have Blondie and Cyndi Lauper played with the Woof and Poofers, and I say that name. Wolf, the Wolf and Pups. Wolf and Pups, I apologize. This I believe it's Whiff and Poofs. Whiff and Poofs, see, there yes. That's Poops, the New Pups. Haven. I was thinking, Cleveland, are mispronouncing. <laughs> but that, like all these different kind of things make it so great. Then you get big history. The Stones kicked off their 89 tour at Toads. They needed a warm-up show before they went to the Vet in Philly. That's tremendous. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge touchstone. Dylan's longest concert at Toad's Place in New Haven. I remember hearing someone talk about that. Bob Dylan was on stage, and there's a curfew in New yes. Haven. Yeah. And the fire marshal was telling the people at Toad's, like, you've got to shut this down. And they're like, you go tell Bob Dylan <laughs> that we're going to shut this down. Right. And can you see Bob Dylan do that at Madison Square Garden? No. They'd be like, hey, show's over. <laughs> time, time to go home. Four and a half hours of history. Yes. And then, for people who don't know, Drake, Cardi B, Snoop Dogg. So today's bands are still going through here all the time. And then you got local legends like Michael Bolton and Marion Meadows. These are big musical people that come through the state. So it brings a lot to the table, not just big names, but like I said, like we met Marion Meadows, or people don't know, great jazz musician, great jazz historian, right. really, really bright individual. And he's important to this. Like that's the kind of history that comes through Toads. Jazz to Johnny Cash and everything in between. So where are you now in putting this documentary together? Documentaries take a long time to put mm -hmm. together. They cost yes, money. Is. Joe, where are we here putting this thing well, together? If I, if I may just reference back to the first mm -hmm. photo that was put up on the screen. Uh, that was Big Mike. Mm -hmm. 
uh, one, of, one of two owners, and, and then uh, Brian joined him a year later. So I just want to make certain we made note of that. Uh, I also want to say that uh, you know we are privileged and honored to be able to produce this documentary because of the history and because of the feeling that goes with being a toady. So we are looking forward to that. And we should point out Brian Phelps, owner of Toad's Place, University of New Haven alum. That's right. Yes, correct. And right. you are involving um, our, our uh, Tom Garrett and our yes. film production program. Yes. Um, our talk chair. a little Absolutely. about that. Oh my gosh, I mean, we should not. Uh, which, which crayon was Don Furtman? Uh, he was he was the uh, yellow one. So Don Furman's a new man. professor and graduate of UNH. Yeah. He's a crayon. So people in that class, you should get an autograph. <laughs> Not just yeah. a great letter from him, but there's a lot of UNH history here, and I think that's awesome, and that needs to be celebrated. Um, I, this is a great university, and there's actually a lot of depth here. Not mm -hmm. just for the and the forensic science programs here is wonderful. There's a lot of music and a lot of arts history here. I think this is just a springboard. I, I know there'll be more than this. Absolutely. Just this Toad's project, because there's a lot of touchstones here at this university. JW, just getting back to your yep. question. And, and uh, first of all, as Andy mentioned off the top, uh, we had a Kickstarter campaign to, uh, we, we knew there would be interest, and it wasn't a question, uh, because of the history that Toad's is not only nationally, but also internationally. And after 40 days, uh, on, uh, I believe it was 2.45 p.m. Christmas Eve. Uh, we ended the campaign uh, basically over $80,000. All we did was ask people to mm -hmm. contribute. But what does it do? It not only gives us seed money to begin, but it also gives us credibility mm -hmm. that Toads does mean something mm -hmm. to so many. Yeah. Uh, as, as far as where are we right now? Well, we're doing what uh, any good uh, documentary or movie uh, group would do. You're out looking for support, you're out looking for revenue, and that will be my primary responsibility over the next three to five months to get that done. And you're both adjunct faculty yes. here yes, at the are. university, and are you uh, talking about this in your classes and engaging with the students? Yes, I, I can't speak for Joe, but I've had one or two students go, is that you, Mr. Bill? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that is me. <laughs> and it was funny, uh, when I was there that night for the Harvard Yale week, and I ran into one of my students, I go, be careful, have a great time, yes. hope to see you on Monday. <laughs> but it is very, it's cool, let's just be honest, it's really cool to be working on something like this and having a student come up. But I hope, again, they should feel part of this. Yes. You hit it. UNH is a big part of this story. It is a New Haven story, but it's a University of New Haven story. And Phelps, who's very bright and smart, a lot of these clubs didn't change with the times. He did. Yes. Dance clubs and DJs are what kids do. Give him credit. He played along. And not only played along, he celebrates it. He brings in YouTubers that people want to sit and listen to. That's very smart. That's what my kids want. And that's what they want. So give him a credit. I just think he's very bright and plays the time so, so well. And he is. And, and obviously, uh, Toad's had a swifty night. Well, how could you not do that? How could you not? And, and, uh, but now, and now they're doing, they do dance parties. And uh, what, whatever the kids want, whatever the fans want, mm -hmm. that's what Mike is doing. He's a businessman. And, and Brian is, I mean, that's his focus. Yep. And, uh, I, but on the other hand, too, it's also his legacy. And it's also the legacy of New Haven, as well mm -hmm. as Yale, and, mu and the music industry and the genres that have, that have gone in and out of there over the last 50 years in 2025. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So with just a minute left, uh, next steps. What's happening next? <laughs> next, uh, like I said, we are uh, focused on um, speaking with those who could, uh, you know, who want to invest uh, in this movie. We're looking for um, uh, executive producers and, and, and again, we're still building the foundation in order to produce this world, uh, what, what I would call legacy, this, this history of music. And my students will be happy to hear this. Research, 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 research. <laughs> yes. This is the time where you read. It's not just for the 1130com. <laughs> it is. You need to do it also in documentaries. It's an important time to keep your ears open, keep your eyes open, yeah. because you're gonna, we're going to meet and learn new things along the way, which we constantly do in this project. We do. We do. And, and, and just to, one more thing. I've told my students that, uh, please, don't think bad of me if I don't let you turn in assignments late. I don't have time to be backpedaling because <laughs> all I do is move forward. So, there you go. Thank you. 
Now that wrap, that'll wrap up another edition of Charger 360. Andy Billman, Joe Franco, Thank you. producing the documentary on Toad's Place. When it's done, gentlemen, come on back and we'll talk about it, especially the, the story behind the story <laughs> and everything that you guys are going to have to go through to pull this together. But I would think we will do that. you're going to have people lining up to talk to you about this, this story. We yes. hope so. Yeah. We're really excited. I think Joe had a privilege to be doing the story. Really yes, are. Indeed. Indeed it is. All right, and they work here at the University of New Haven, like you said, the UNH That's Connection. Right. We are here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Center of the Universe. Yes, it is. Good luck with the project. Joe, Thank Andy, you. thanks Thank for you, being here. Thank you. For Bruce and for Andy and for Joe, I'm Jay Dove. Thanks for watching Charger 360, telling the stories at the University of New Haven. We'll see you next time, everybody.